Good afternoon, and thank you so much for joining us. My name is Jessica Kearney, and I'm Vice President here at the Travelers Institute, and I am so happy to welcome you to our very special Citizen Travelers at the Travelers Institute program this afternoon. Citizen Travelers is our aggressively nonpartisan initiative to empower travelers employees to really take part in the civic life of their communities. It's really part of our broader commitment to be a good corporate citizen and a corporation of good citizens. So underpinning all the work that you and I do every day is a representative democracy with resilient public institutions and an economic system that's governed by the rule of law. So these are really important factors for any business and ones that we cannot take for granted. Democracy depends on informed and engaged citizens and it's with that important fact in mind that we are really pleased to host this series today, a series of programs examining civic engagement. We hope you'll continue to join us throughout the year to hear how we as business leaders can preserve and strengthen our democratic systems. Before we begin today's program, I'd like to share a dis quick disclaimer. I'd also like to invite you to submit your questions now and throughout the program. So drop them in the Q&A feature at the bottom of your screen. And with that, I'm thrilled to be joined today by three amazing guests. First up, we're gonna have coach Joe Kennedy, who is the co-founder and executive director of The Team, a nonpartisan organization that creates award-winning programming focused on integrating civic engagement and athletics. A lifetime basketball player and coach, Joe was a special assistant for the Office of Public Engagement at the White House, where he served as a liaison to key national partners and built a coalition of sports organizations to promote the First Lady's Let's Move campaign against childhood obesity. For the past seven years, Kennedy was an assistant coach at the College of the Holy Cross's men basketball team, and he helped the Crusaders win the Patriot League championship and advance to the 2016 NCAA tournament. Then we're gonna hear from two student athletes who are really putting all of this effort into work. Mia Reyes is a member of the women's tennis team at Salem State University, where she is majoring in political science. Originally from Rayton, Missouri, Mia is deeply involved in campus life, particularly as vice president of her pre-law society at school. As part of her participation in the Engaged Athlete Fellowship, Mia is organizing a civic celebration event aimed at promoting voter turnout at SSU, and we're going to hear a lot about that project coming up. Then we're gonna hear from Scott McKenzie on the division one track and cross country team for Lipscomb University in Nashville, Tennessee. He's an international student athlete from Melbourne, Australia, pursuing his PhD in leadership and policy. So really great match here for this topic. As part of his participation in the Engaged Athlete Fellowship, he's organizing a visit to the Juvenile Justice Center for all division one college athletes in Nashville. So again, looking, looking forward to hearing about those projects and much more. Uh, now I'd love to welcome Joe to our virtual floor to help kick us off by telling us a little bit more about the team and what you're looking to accomplish through this organization. Take it away, Joe. Well, thank you so much, Jessica, and uh, really grateful for the opportunity to be here today and get a chance to have this uh, important conversation with everybody, uh, and really grateful to have a, a, an ongoing partnership with, with travelers who've been um, just such uh, important leaders in this uh, nonpartisan civic engagement space. Um, and it also is wonderful today that we've got two rock star student athletes joining us and, and Mia and Scotty, and, Excited for you all to, to hear directly from them. Um, so I thought it'd be helpful if we start with kind of who we are and, 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 and what our focus is with the team. So we are a nonprofit organization that's focused on integrating nonpartisan civic engagement and voter participation into college athletics. And we always talk about that we want to offer pathways for every athlete, coach, and administrator to become a more engaged citizen. Uh, we really were, were started from an organic movement in the summer and fall of 2020. And as that movement has grown, we thought there was an unbelievable opportunity here to establish a nonprofit organization, which we launched in 2022. And since our uh, first summer of being active on college campuses, we've worked with over 72,000 athletes, coaches, and administrators from across the country. As we think about our vision and our mission and, and what we're trying to build here with the team, you know. We strive for a future where all student athletes are active participants in our democracy and all athletic departments, teams, and coaches established civic engagement as a priority. I was a college coach for 12 years. I played college basketball at Northwestern. Uh, as I reflect back on my time on the sidelines, I thought there was more that we could have done, particularly as coaches, to establish civic engagement as a life skill 
um, and, and really work on these civic muscles that our athletes have while we have them on campus, right? Because we know that if they're going to volunteer in their community, if they're going to vote, if they're going to be an active citizen, they develop those habits in college, it's going to stay with them for the rest of their lives. And thinking about our mission, and we'll talk more about this throughout the, 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 the back and forth today, is really teammates, leaders, and citizens. Uh, and trying to, to make that through line and that connection when we're working with our, with our athletes and coaches. What, how can we develop great teammates? How can we inspire leaders? Um, and then ultimately, how can we empower citizens to create the future they want and utilizing college athletics as, a, as that platform? As we're actively planning and, and, and preparing our work for, for 2024 and the upcoming uh, next nine months, um, I really wanted to talk about and, and showcase kind of four programs that we have uh, that we're working really hard on every single day to, to prepare and grow and scale. And then in particular, we'll dive into detail into the Engaged Athlete Fellowship. So we really have four basic programs. Uh, first of all, we call high impact civic events. We really try to, to capitalize on National Voter Registration Day, uh, Vote Early Week, and then what we call All Vote No Play Day, which is really election day, as in some of these key civic moments in the fall every year as a way to engage our athletes and coaches in, in different college campuses across the country. Secondly, we work really closely with a wonderful partner, uh, All In Campus Democracy Challenge, to set up a program for coaches to pledge to support their student athletes to get registered to vote, uh, give them nonpartisan uh, resources to participate in the election, uh, and ultimately uh, uh, really trying to build a bridge on a college campus between the athletic department and other civic leaders on campus. Third is our civic captain initiative, an opportunity to really uh, recruit and work with and support uh, and teach student athletes that want to go kind of to the next level of engagement on their campus around voting and, and want to really uh, be an active uh, uh, civic engagement organizer on their campus. We set up this program to really uh, develop a training tools uh, and support for student athletes that want to that apply for the program, raise their hand and really want to take it to the next level. And then lastly, in a program I'm just really thrilled about our engaged athlete fellowship. Um, those other three programs really a little more focused in the fall to where the engaged athlete fellowship is a year long program. We've got 25 amazing student athletes in the program right now. Um, and I think it's a, it's, a, it's a way to really support them to become civic leaders. Uh, we've got a few bullets here that I would like to point out on in the program that I think is important. One is that the student athletes in this program participate in virtual meetings, the Zoom calls. We've got seven over the course of the year where the entire cohort comes together, networking opportunities, and we also work through leadership curriculum. Second, all 25 student athletes in this program, Scotty and, and Mia will talk more about this later, are executing a civic engagement project on their campus. We help them to develop the plan, to develop a budget and then to execute it. And then third, we're gonna bring this whole group to Washington DC uh, in this upcoming June to have a multi-year day, a multi-day trip at the kind of end of the program, uh, get in front of business leaders and sports leaders and civic leaders and have these important conversations uh, and also building out the first ever engaged athlete forum, which will take place in, in Washington DC this, this uh, summer. So it's been a really successful a program. We're in our first year of it. Um, it'll finish up in June. We'll launch year two of it in August of 2024. And like I said, I'm just thrilled today that we've got two amazing student athletes that are joining us for the call that are at, in our leadership program right now. Joe, that's terrific. What a unique platform and program uh, and, and what a great way to develop those leadership skills and obviously promote civic engagement. So next up, Mia, I'd love to invite you onto the Zoom floor to talk a little bit about one of the projects that Joe just so nicely teed up. We'd love to hear your story. Hi, everyone. My name is Mia Reyes, um, and I'm, like I said, as part of the Salem State Women's Tennis Team. So a little bit about my project that we decided to do was, the first part was the All Vote No Play Day, in which I encouraged everyone to come to the polling location that we have on our campus to vote. We did walks to the polls. I even had our Salem State President John Keenan host a walk to the poll for staff and faculty. With that, we had a huge table set up with food, games, raffles, um, a photo booth, stuff like that, just to really, really increase voter turnout, voter engagement, stuff like that. 
The next part of my programming with the, uh, with the fellowship is a dinner that I'm hosting with student athletes. Um, at this dinner, we will be announcing a um, initiative that we have been planning throughout the entire year that would require all contract Salem State athletes to attend two civic engagement events um, an entire year, so one per semester. I'm hoping that the athletic department will be hosting one of them. And then with the work that I do on my campus, as well as the Center for Civic Engagement on my campus, um, there are plenty and plenty of events that uh, that they are allowed to go to that would count as their civic engagement event. Um, with this, we have a couple of political entities that are invited on campus. We have our Lieutenant Governor, who is a Salem State alum and a women's basketball team player, uh, Lieutenant Governor uh, Kim Driscoll. We also have um, a Salem State alum, Representative Manny Cruz. All of them are invited, um, and most of them of which have said that they will be coming. So I'm very excited about that. I'm really hoping that with these uh, previous student athlete leaders who are now in jobs of, of uh, public service, public office, that it really, really um, increase the civic engagement with the student athletes. Um, and really open that discussion and networking opportunities for them. So thank you. Wonderful, Mia. Thank you so much for sharing that. Look forward to digging into your story a little bit more as we go on. And now um, I'd love to welcome Scott to tell us a little bit about your project with the team at Lipscomb University. Thanks, Jessica. Um, so my name is Scott McKenzie. I attend uh, uh, Lipscomb University in Nashville, Tennessee, Division One University. I run track and field and cross country. Um, and my my role is to pull all the Division One schools in Nashville. There's four Division One schools in Belmont, Vanderbilt, and Tennessee State, as well as Lipscomb, together to to impact our national community. Um, we've had this idea of bringing this group together over the last year to pour into different areas, um, and the first one being civic engagement. Uh, we are sending ten SAC reps, uh, student athlete advisory committee reps from Lipscomb and the other three schools to the Juvenile Justice Center to put really influential characters. You're gonna hear me talk a lot about the sphere of influence student athletes have. Um, putting those individuals in front of, of juvenile delinquents that are coming out of their rehabilitation prison process in Tennessee. Um, these are 15 to 18 year olds. So putting student athletes in front of them having conversation with them, having discourse with them um, and talking about their lives, our lives. So again, a lot about influence. Uh, I visited all the SAC groups of the past four weeks and so stood in front of them and try to make them understand the sphere of influence they have on their campuses. Um, student athletes will walk through campus and students, regular students um, will turn and look, say that's so-and-so on the basketball team, that's so-and-so on the uh, tennis team. Um, so allowing them to understand their sphere of influence to then go to the Juvenile Justice Center and pour into that community to, to see the impact of their influence there. Wonderful. Thank you so much for sharing that. Um, so I, I'd love to invite all of our speakers um, to come back together so we can dig into this a little bit more. I would love to hear from the group and, and Joe, maybe we can start with you. I wanna hear about that initial spark of inspiration, right? So it's clear that um, all three of you are very dedicated to this issue that you're uh, you know, walking the walk and doing this in practice. And we're hoping that we can um, help members of the audience really learn and take some practical takeaways from the projects that you're implementing this year in 2024. So Joe, maybe let's start with you. What initially inspired you to get involved in the community? And clearly you've got, you know, professional background in this as well. Um, but where did that kernel start for you? Well, um, you know, in the summer of 2020 as a coach and in the fall of 2020, we were having conversations in our locker rooms across the country with athletes about a lot more than our sport. Um, and so I remember talking to other coaches and I'm coaching basketball at Holy Cross at the time, and I'm talking to folks across the country in different sports and kind of coming to the same conclusion, which is our athletes wanted to do more to express themselves. They wanted to figure out how to participate in our democratic process. They were looking to us to help provide some resources and some leadership. And we realized it was a place we just hadn't done enough as a profession. Um, so I think there was really in that moment, initially, it's I've got to do better as a coach to support the student athletes in my locker room. And then when you start hearing that same uh, uh, conversation across multiple uh, multiple uh, times, you start to realize, OK, we think there's an opportunity to help coaches and administrators to step into this role. And then the more we did it, 
Um, I, I think then what we realized is there's some unbelievable student athletes out here across the country that really care. They're trying to make a difference in their community. And we thought about how can we create an organization, the team, to step in, support them, give them resources, uh, try to open up some doors for them, and in a nonpartisan way, build out this, you know, the leaders of, of tomorrow. I, I've got three little kids at home. I want them to step into a, a strong and healthy democracy and community as they get older. Um, so I'm certainly motivated on, on a daily uh, basis to try to make that happen in, in any way I can for my three little kiddos. And you said this started in, in 2020 and you're kind of an official year one heading into year two. What's your scale at this point? What's your reach? How many schools are you represented at at the moment? Yeah, so since 2020, we've worked with over 72,000 athletes, coaches, and administrators in different programs and different events. Um, we've worked with over a, a 1,000 uh, campuses uh, across the country, uh, different levels too. So it's Division One, Division Two, yeah. Division Three. We've worked with some community colleges. Um, and, and so we've, we've really uh, tried to do is, is uh, scale as much as we can. And we've been a group of passionate volunteers until we created the organization. And I think it's part of the thing that's exciting from our end is that there's a lot of room for growth uh, to try to support this, this uh, universe of athletes and coaches across the country. That's terrific. Um, and then I want to pull uh, Scott, you and, and Mia in. Scott, let's start with you. Where did that inspiration start for you? What sort of jogged you to, to, you know, to raise your hands and be a leader in this? Yeah, so I was always a part of the Student Athlete Advisory Committee at Lipscomb. Um, it was actually through All Vote No Play, uh, what the team sort of started as. Um, we had a crossover event talking about being good citizens and good teammates. Um, I see it on my campus. I see it on plenty of campuses at the Division One level. But people are really good teammates and have such high impact on their team. And then seeing how it was done at a bigger scale or a larger scale through the All Vote No Play, uh, voter registration, voter, voter pushing, um, that sort of exposed me to learning more about voting in America. I had no idea about anything to do with voting and I was exposed to that through all but no play. Um, and then it pushed me to be more than just the cross country athlete that I am. Um, Lipscomb pours into me, Nashville pours into Lipscomb and knowing the influence that student athletes have um, pouring back into our community through a variety of avenues sort of pushed me into where I'm, what I'm doing today and my passion for it. And Mia? This is honestly one of my favorite questions because it gives me the opportunity to share a little bit about my passion. Um, in my opinion, getting initially involved starts in high school. Um, joining the leadership track at your school, being a student athlete. Um, you don't have to be a student uh, athlete captain, but I definitely think it helps. Um, and with this, you set that mindset up in high school. And then once you go to university, once you th take that step into being a student athlete in college, that mindset continues as you grow as a student athlete in, in university. Um, and so when I first came into college, I joined as many clubs as possible as a student athlete, um, but I still kind of held back until my sophomore year of college. And with that, I joined the Frederick E. Berry Institute of Politics on my campus. And it was like my passion for politics and civic and voter engagement just kind of like exploded into this whole new realm. Um, with that, I started leading the Vikings Vote Initiative on my campus, which, which we have about anywhere from 15 to 25 students that go around and get just about everyone on campus who's eligible to vote to vote and to create a pledge to go vote on election day. Um, along with that, we host programs throughout the school year um, just about political things. We also bring in um, political entities on our campus. Um, and with that, it really has just expanded my passion and my inspiration to be really involved in this type of community. Um, I have been very involved in my community up at Salem State, including in the surrounding areas. Um, with that, we have been part of getting the new mayor elected for Salem. Um, we hosted a mayoral debate with them, had them on campus. I was so excited to be able to meet all of the candidates with that um, and really create a relationship that um, we both will benefit for in the future. And then through my uh, responsibilities at the IOP, I was introduced to this fellowship with the team and honestly, it has just made me more obsessed with working with civic um, engagement. And I really, really like it. And I'm so thankful for this opportunity to be a part of that um, as it fuels me and allows me to feel younger minds into doing stuff similar. 
Yeah, it's terrific. Both of your stories so energizing. It's a it's a great platform to talk about. And you know, on its face, right? Sports and civic engagement, maybe not something that you put together uh, first thing, not the first thing that you think of. But you know, Scott, listening to you say about you know when student athletes walk across campus, you, you turn and you look, right? You recognize those people, and just recognizing that the platform you have, that leadership platform, to make a difference. So. Uh, we, we've we've skirted around the edges here a little bit, but I, I kind of want to hit that more squarely on the nose about just really explaining how any involvement really in sports. You've been you've been talking back in high school, um, and when somebody plays or if they have a family member who plays, how that can teach them some of those core foundational skills to be involved in your community, to be to be a leader. And 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 Joe, this is the thread that runs through you know runs through the team. But can you hit that maybe a little bit more directly? Yeah, you know, for us, as we were building out the organization and thinking about this work that we've been so fortunate to try to you know support student athletes, you can see how passionate Scotty and, and me are, and, and they're just making a huge positive impact in their community. We think about teammates, leaders, and citizens. So we want to help develop great teammates, inspire leaders, and empower citizens athletes, whether you play high school you know, sports, you play college sports, you've got kids who play sports. Um, being a great teammate is, is so essential, right? Like, do you show up, you know, first thing about being a great teammate is you show up for your team, right? You show up for practice every day. I'm showing up to help others. If you're going to be a great teammate, you got to be positive. You got to be optimistic. No one wants to go to practice every day. Uh, and, and then, and then here, here comes in somebody who's just going to be uh, bringing negative energy to that, to that practice, to that workout. So you got to be positive. You got to have great energy and optimism uh, about what you're doing in your sport. Uh, and then ultimately on a team, everyone's kind of working towards a common goal. And you've got a diverse set of people in a locker room. They could be from all over the country. They could be international, different faiths, uh, wildly different upbringings. Um, you name it, any possible kind of metric that you'd want to look at. In a sports team, you're bringing together all this diversity. And you're saying, we're going to have a common goal to get better as a group and try to win as many games as we can in our sport or get better at my individual sport, but I'm still part of a team as we're working towards a team championship, right? So the idea of showing up, being positive, we're gonna to work together towards a common goal. So that's our teammates piece. You know, the leadership piece, people can lead in different ways. They could be very vocal with their leadership. Some lead more quietly with their actions, but on any great team, you've got positive uh, leadership that's helping to take that group that's working together towards a common goal that showed up for each other and move in the same direction. Just not a, a good team isn't just led by a coach. It's also led by the athletes in that locker room that are pushing that same direction. So we take some of these traits that athletes uh, have inherently and say those same things connect to being an engaged citizen and to strengthening our democracy and making your community better. Uh, you have the agency as, a, as an athlete um, to, to make a difference, to use your platform for good. And you've got these traits from your experiences on the court or on the field they're going to give you the ability to have a real positive uh, impact and make a difference. So we're constantly trying to make that connection with them using sports language and, and also really pulling on those traits that come naturally to these student athletes. That's great. Um, and Mia and, and Scott, maybe I'll start with you, Mia. So, so Joe just laid out a bunch of different traits and characteristics that, that make, you know, the, the, um, uh, athletes and civically engaged citizens just it's just a really good fit together were there any that he just mentioned that really spoke to you in your journey and things that you've picked up and learned along the way yeah so you'll hear me mention this a lot today coalition building um being part of a team is very similar to coalition building especially coming in as a freshman you have to be able to be open um be vulnerable with each other to really build that relationship and be able to work towards a common goal Keeping yourself accountable with this. Um, tennis is a very single dominated sport. Um, we do have doubles thrown in there, but a lot of people who come in, especially as freshmen, um, have only ever played singles in their life. And having to kind of switch that mindset of once you're you're now part of a whole team, you don't do good that one day, you have to hold yourself accountable with that. Um, and I think being part of being a leader is coming in to practice the next day after you didn't, too, didn't do too good during a match and just be like, hey, I'm sorry, I didn't do too good. Um, my serves were off, my forehands were off. You know what, today I'd really like us to focus on that. I'd really like us to work from that um, and build ourselves up like that. 
um, holding yourself accountable in that way is really, really essential to um, learning how to be contribute, contributing members of your community and your society um, and being part of a team and watching other people be part of a team as student athletes. It really promotes that and it just, it will really, really benefit you in the future. That's terrific. And, and Scott, what about you? Any, any pieces of that really resonate with your personal journey? And, and certainly it sounds like you've got some great experience pulling in students from all other schools across Nashville and, and that organizing piece of it. What's really been kind of that key eye-opening element for you that you've been able to develop through this? Yeah. Um, my, so my sport similar to Mia, it's individual or it's perceived as being an individual sport, um, cross country and track. You run yourself, you don't uh, unless you don't really, you don't hand off to anyone. Um, so understanding how the team functions on a sports team, basketball team, you work really well together. Everyone has to be on the same page. Cross country, you you recognize your differences. I I do the 5K. One of my best friends is the 400 meter, 800 guy. But understanding the different uh, events and how they come into play and how they work together towards the common goal. I mean, they say it's not a team sport, um, but if you've ever seen a cross country championship or a track championship, the team's going crazy on the side for those individuals. So I think understanding the differences of your teammates and, and then replicating, being a part of a big team uh, in the community, you'll have those skills as athletes going into the community, um, but it's replicable for anyone, not just athletes, is understanding the flow and harmony of a team. That's terrific. And, and that feeds into my next question, which is, um, you know, when we think about civic engagement, um, we, we think about keeping an open mind, right? Having that curiosity, learning. And Mia, you talked about, you know, working with the lieutenant governor and, and, and seeing kind of the, the process unfold, seeing the election process unfold. Um, Joe, maybe we'll, we'll, we'll bring you in on this one. How does being part of that team and experiencing that strong teamwork that we just heard Scott and, and Mia talk about so personally and in, in, in their personal experience, how does that kind of help you create that open-mindedness and keep that open-mindedness. I know you talked about positivity, but when it comes to, um, you know, civic engagement, um, you know, being open to ideas, different, different points of view and perspectives. I think certainly from, again, the, I think from the sports perspective is, you know, I would just come back to the idea that you're going to have people who come together to be on a team for a season that just has such different experiences and different different perspectives, right? And, and if you're gonna have a successful team and, and get better and hopefully getting better ultimately wins you games in your sport is um, you, that group's gotta work together and you've gotta be able to have some empathy for the person who's in that locker room with you and where they're coming from and what their perspective is and be able to be open-minded to have a conversation with them um, and to get to know each other and get connected beyond your sports so that when you get out there for practice and the games, you're going to perform at a higher level because that connection's there. Well, you can only have that connection if you're willing to be kind of open-minded and have that, uh, have a conversation, get to know each other better. doesn't mean you have to be best friends. It uh, doesn't mean you have to spend all your time together. But when you show up every day for practice and you put that jersey on, you, you, there's got to be a connection there and a, and, a, and a willingness to put yourself in someone else's shoes, especially as you go through a season, right? Because like, Seasons are so up and down mm -hmm. um, that any good successful team is going to stay tightly knit when the things are going wrong and you've lost a few games in a row and a team that isn't as successful is going to pull apart. And so much of that success is built around the fact that you have a really healthy connection because you've been open-minded. You've had these conversations. There's a sense of empathy of understanding where the other person is coming from. That's as important as trying to figure out, you know, who, who, how to stop some other teams play or, or who's got the best jump shot on your roster. Yeah, and I think Mia got to some of that and some of her earlier comments about, you know, maybe you didn't have the best serve that day and you got to figure out how to come back and, um, you know, still be a, a positive uh, contributor uh, to the to the team and, and on behalf of your university. So that's great. So let's talk logistics for a minute. So I think we talked about some of the foundational framework and some of your experiences, but let's get let's get into this. And I think this is true for student athletes, certainly true for professionals. We call it work life balance. Right. But how do you juggle all of this? Because I imagine that being a full-time student and also being a student athlete and then layering on some of these leadership pieces, how do you how do you balance your time? How do you make time for it all and and um and be successful with it? And maybe Scott, you want to start? Yeah, I, that's a really good question. Uh I'm working in compliance. I am a student athlete, I'm studying my for my PhD. It's it's so much. Um 
first gen athlete and then layering it all on top uh, with the civic work we do as a, as a department and individually and through the team. I think incorporating your passion into everything you do is the easiest way to do it. Yeah. Um, I'm the same person on the track as I am in the classroom, as I am at the workplace, as I am talking to you all right now, um, incorporating my passion into every single thing, every facet of my life makes it so much easier. Um, and I think that builds a ton of credibility to have teammates actually listen to you. Okay, Scott's put into this event together this weekend. Let's all go because he's, he's putting time and effort into this. And we know this is something he's passionate about. So I think building that report and credibility really helps um, take the load off my shoulders and it doesn't feel like work. It's just everything that I do. Yeah, it's that passion propelling you forward. You know, I would just add this. I think uh, anyone out there that's looking to hire someone, I always think student athletes come to the table where yeah. they have these transferable skills, right? There's transferable skills. Everything we just described, we feel strongly at the team is transferable to a healthy democracy because of the experiences they go through. But I think it also transfers to being a, a, an unbelievable employee, right? Because mm -hmm. they have to balance these things. Sometimes it's e easier than other times. It's really hard, but they come to the table. Um, I think so many athletes come to the table with this, uh, with these traits are just transferable, right? They're, they're used to being held accountable. Um, they have to show up for practice every day. They got to be at their lift. They got to go to training table. They got to do the, and they're, and they're doing that on a daily basis. They, they work hard. They work under pressure. They take coaching. They know how to take criticism. Um, they they understand the idea about getting better setting goals and trying to reach those goals. So I think all those things that happen in an individual or team sport as a college athlete, you're developing all these while, by the way, going to school and hopefully getting good grades and earning your degree and, 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 and maybe even working a part-time job on top of that, they're building a sense of grit that I think will carry over into whatever they do next. So I, I am a huge advocate. If anyone out there is hiring, uh, get, give the edge to a, to a former student athlete. Love that. And I, you know, and I think that really permeates too. And you can think about this from different angles, right? I, I talked a little bit about our citizen travelers initiative uh, here at, at travelers, encouraging um, our employees to get involved in civic engagement and civic leadership. And I think one of the great things, whether it be student athlete or, you know, just your job in the public or private sector is really developing all of those skills that you can use across your life, whether it's in your personal life and your civic engagement um, certainly at work, negotiation, soft skills, listening, all these things that help you be a convener, right? And understand the issues in your community and really listen to what they are um, and help find a way forward and help create some action momentum. So I think that's that's really fantastic. Um, so, it, and Scott, maybe we can, we can start with you on this one, um, but how do people get engaged? What are your recommendations? So, we, we, you know, we've talked a little bit about the philosophy and the skills and our personal experiences. Um, we've got folks on, on the line who in theory might be in a position to help um, influence young people in their lives, um, family members who might be student athletes who probably have some student athletes on the line, um, working professionals too, who might wanna take some bits and uh, learnings from this and, and you know uh, think about it in their own workplaces. What recommendations do you have for working professionals and athletes to get involved um, whether that be with the team, your organization across the country, different chapters that you touch, or if maybe they're not as close to it um, in a geographic location, how they might be able to just, you know, start some momentum on their own. Yeah, great question. Um, I, I know I've talked about influence a ton. We've all talked about influence, but I'm going to tie it back to influence once again. Um, on our t for me, it's easy to see the sphere or funnel of influence we have. I mean, going to the Juvenile Justice Center, we're going to have a a funnel of influence to the juvenile linguists in that rehabilitation process. Or as a SAC president, I have the student athlete body. But in athletics and outside of our teams, every person on this call has a sphere of influence, whether you know it or not. It doesn't take, it can be physical, the, the leadership position you hold uh, as a vice president, or it could be as a parent in your home, or it could be as the really good neighbor. Um, we all have this sphere of influence and how we act day to day and how we carry our conversations, how we have healthy discourse with people about hard topics to do with voting, to do with um, congressional engagement. I think understanding that you have a sphere of influence, no matter who you are, where you're at, I think is what changed me and my understanding of all things civic engagement. So knowing, knowing those people and knowing your role, uh, I think is extremely healthy and important. What about you, Mia? Do you have any recommendations for folks wanting to get involved? 
Um, well, I think Scotty puts it in a fantastic way. Um, getting involved, I kind of take it more in like a um, political or like job way of networking. I think networking is a huge part of being successful in your life and your career, and especially in student athletes. Um, not just networking with like the coaches, but networking with the other players on the other teams. I think some of the best people I've ever met um, have been people that I'm competing against. <laughs> when you are switching over on the courts, um, those five minutes you get as a break, you're meant to be relaxing, thinking about your game. I'm talking, I'm getting to know the person that I'm playing. I think it creates connections and I immediately try to get their information after, whether it's their phone number, their socials, whatever it is, so I can stay connected to them. And I think with my um, fellowship program that I'm doing, when it comes time to host that large event at the end of the semester, I will be able to reach out to them and ask for help, ask for advice, um, ask for attendees. Um, and with that, and along with that, like internships as well. Um, some of the coaches that I've spoken to after the matches, um, they have said like, hey, like, what's your major? Oh, you're into um, physical training or just sports and medicine. Well, we have a um, athletic trainer internship program that we have at our campus that you are more than welcome to apply to. And I love taking that information and giving it to the students on my campus who are interested in that. Um, personally, I am not, but <laughs> to each their own. And so when it comes time that I take my step into whether it's my law, my law uh, career or my political career, I know that I have these networks that I've created throughout my years at university, high school, and just walking down the street um, that I know that I'll be able to reach out to. So making those connections is a fantastic way to get involved. Um, and if that, even that is something that you like, or if you want to get even more involved, fun fact, your local elected officials have to hold public office hours. So if you have something that you don't like, you can go to your local mayor's office, you can go into his office and you can sit there and you can talk to them. They are required to have those. I do that in Salem. I do that in my hometown. Um, that is something very simple that you can get involved in. You can also call your elected officials, your state reps, your congressional reps. You can write to them. You can call them. You can email them. Um, they have to listen to you. So if you want to make change and you really, really want to get involved, I think that's one of the easiest ways to get involved. I love that. I love the example of, you know, talking to the player on the opposite team, someone that, you know, you're supposed to be at odds with, right? And I think having those skills to 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 bridge that relationship and, and then you really flipped it on its head and use it as something positive to expand your networks. And, you know, I, I think, and when we're thinking about public discourse and we're thinking about civic engagement, I, I love that example. That's, that's terrific. Um, Scott, do you have any thoughts on that, that finding, you know, the ability to help you find common ground with folks that might not have the same point of view as you, which is obviously Obviously, you know, something that we need in society today if we're going to make progress. Yeah. Um, I mean, I go to a Church of Christ school in Nashville in the South. Um, I am Australian. I'm Catholic. I came into a culture that was completely different to mine. And we have a ton of people that come from all over the world, um, all over the country, from different cultures, from different microcultures. And we all have to work towards common goal and understand those differences, recognize those differences. Um, my team meets every Sunday just as a healthy we call it vulnerability. Like we have a cup of tea and we talk just about our lives. Um, it's really harsh, like a straight example, but understanding everyone on a deep note on our team allows us to get to know the differences of one another, why we act the way we do, why we talk the way we do, what builds us and makes us who we are. Um, I think understanding those differences and how different things, different levels impact each other, um, whether it be something small like your friends or something big like legislation, how those impact different people groups. I think extremely important. So understanding those cultural or microcultural differences is crucial for that. That's great. And what did you call that? The the gathering? Vulnerability, but put TEA at the end instead. Oh, got it. I love that. I love that. Um, and, and Joe, I know just looking at the work that, that you do with the team, I know um, you have um, a bunch of different, I'd say I call them tactics, right? Of different ways of bringing people together and breakfasts and these types of things. Can you share maybe some creative ideas or ways that, that um, folks who are working with the team across different university campuses are actually just like the, the vulnerability that Scott was just talking about, just maybe some of these practical ways that people are bridging that gap and bringing people together just to give our audience members some ideas, things that they could copy or steal from. Yeah, definitely. And uh, I, I'll start with, um, so we are our website's the team.org. 
So if, I'm going to put in a plug for that right now. If anyone wants to visit the website, you can you can you can see our our, our work up there at the team.org. Believe it or not, it was not taken. Um, so we we got that somehow, um, uh, which I'm still very grateful for. Uh, so I, I would say two, two things, Jessica. One was that um, you know we try to use sports as a way to get people to come together, and then we use that moment that we sports kind of pulled people together to now have these conversations, right? That that's kind of now it's a little bit easier to have be open minded and and have this discourse in, in, a, in a in a in a different way than a lot of times uh, maybe our politics pulls us into a different type of conversation. So, in the I'll give you an example. In 2022, we did a Zoom call. We had, uh, we're very fortunate. We, we recruited uh, Dr. Condoleezza Rice on the call from Stanford, uh, Stephen Curry, uh, Coach Vanderveer from Stanford Women's Basketball, who's now the winningest coach in the history of basketball. And uh, we had a conversation about what it means to be a great teammate. And we had over 2,000 people jump on that Zoom call on a Tuesday night in September of 2022 uh, at 8 p.m. And they were there because they saw that it was Stephen Curry and it was Dr. Rice and Coach Vanderveer. Um, but hopefully that moment of using sports to, to, to pull these folks together. Now we had a conversation about what it means to be a great teammate. How, how do I how do I help at the local level and support my community? Not just sit on the sidelines and, 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 and complain as a fan, but actually get in the game of democracy. And so sometimes using that 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 from our perspective, that platform of sports can be really positive. Um, one resource on our website that's free for everybody to utilize is we have a, a we have a resource page. We have a video library. Within that video library, we've cut up a, what we call like chalk talks. We've got about 30 or 40 short videos, three to five minutes, that you're hearing from a Stephen Curry, a Dr. Uh, Condoleezza Rice. You know, you're hearing from Demario Davis, who plays with the Saints, uh, about a particular topic and message. And then uh, on, on many of them, we also have some follow-up questions. So for anyone that maybe wants to have a conversation, it could be a high school team, could be high school students, it could be a workforce, um, uh, you know, a, a team getting together in that environment. Uh, right there is a pretty, you know, uh, a easy and free resource to maybe just drive a conversation. Uh, and yet you're just kind of, uh, you're inspired to, to think about things a little bit differently because maybe there's a different voice that you're used to seeing up there on Sunday play football or, or, or you're used to seeing uh, at an NBA game kind of uh, proposing a question in a different way can open up a different type of conversation. That's great. Um, yeah, that, that's terrific. And I think all of the useful tips and tricks on your website will be helpful to folks and kind of learning from others' experiences. Like I said, it's uh, always good to not reinvent the wheel, right? Use others' mm -hmm. ideas and, and stretch it how you can. So we have a number of audience questions coming in. So I, I do want to get the audience engaged here and um, have the three of you weigh in on, on some of the questions. Um, so one of the questions that just came in is I have a soon to be college athlete. What advice Mia and Scott do you have for launching a program on their campus? If they're starting from scratch, what would be some of your like ABCs must do, um, to get something up and running on their campus? Uh, contact the team first thing, <laughs> um, that would be an easy plug, but I think tap into the resources you already have on campus. Um, your campus already has built in networks, built in. Uh, ways of doing things tap in you don't have to completely reinvent the wheel tap into the things that your university or your city already has and then build off what they have in your own unique um, way so tapping into the resources that are already available would be my first piece of advice yeah yeah, yeah i agree i think that's a great way to get uh, involved i think waiting until second semester is going to be really helpful for you um, that first semester you don't know a lot of people a lot of people don't know you especially um, so kind of trying to create something from scratch is going to be a little bit harder. Um, so definitely wait till spring semester or second semester, depending on however it goes. Um, and get involved that first semester. Join anything that you might have a slight bit of interest in, um, because that's going to help you in the long run when trying to create your own program. Um, and kind of see what's interesting to the other students on campus. I think that's really important as well. If you come into a campus that um, isn't really interested in a topic and you try and have a program on that topic, you're not going to have a lot of engagement with it. So, um, but I also think that if your campus has like a center for civic engagement, an institute of politics, um, if you're a student athlete, a SAC organization, stuff like that, really get involved with that because they're there to help you. Um, campuses itself also have things like, uh, career centers, um, and stuff like that, that are really there to help you to create, 
um, your ideal life at college. So really utilizing the stuff the campus has. Every campus also has a budget built out for their campus life and rec. So if you want a very large campus program or something like that, reach out to them. They have money and they want to spend it, especially for students. So um, there's no problem reaching out to them. And the worst thing that they can say no, but they're probably going to say yeah. So That's terrific advice. So to take the time, get your feet wet, develop some of the relationships, use the resources that are there and then see where you can see where you can take it from there. So I think that's that's good advice from both of you. Um, Joey, this one's for you. We've got a few versions of this question coming in. Um, you know, uh, folks saying, you know, sometimes I've heard student athletes when it when it comes to talking out on different issues, they're told to stay in their lane, right? So have you ever, ha have you had um, that challenge, I guess, on some of your campuses through the teams or any feedback or have you helped students kind of work through any of that or has that not been something that you've seen? I think, um, you know, we have not seen a lot of it, which is, which I think is really positive. You know, I think on the flip side, most when most people see the college student athletes uh, becoming more engaged, taking taking a step to try to be more involved in the community, it's met with applause. Um, but one of the things we do is we uh, showcase to our student athletes other athletes who at different times in history have stepped out and have probably been met with a lot more criticism. Um, but they were willing to do that in that moment um, for something that they were very uh, passionate about. Whether mm -hmm. that's you know it could be Billie Jean King, you know it could be um, you know LeBron James in in, in twenty twenty, could be Jackie Robinson. I mean, there's so many sports figures who, in a moment, said, "I am going to step forward uh, because I'm really passionate about this, and this is a, something that I think is wrong, and I'm going to use my platform to try to to try to make it better." Um, and so, showing athletes that that um, uh, you have a platform beyond just your sport and here are these historical figures that, that came before you, but then also tying it down to, uh, or tying it back to like, you don't have to be Billie Jean King to make a difference, right? She, 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 she's done amazing things in her life. I hopefully uh, we could, you know, all have a massive impact, but just being able to make a positive difference in your world, uh, in the sphere of influence that you have that Scotty talked about, it could be really, really huge just in your own locker room in your own dorm, uh, somebody who's a friend on campus. It's just kind of taking that first step. Kind of like what, what, what they were just talking about when you get to campus too, is like, don't hold back. If you're passionate about something, take that first step. Um, and you kind of don't know where it's going to go from there. Uh, we have another question coming in, kind of uh, continuing along the same line of thinking. Is there anything that can be done regarding um, having student athletes participate in these types of projects as part of their name image likeness requirements? So I know that there's been quite the overhaul um, over the last several years. And I, I think I read something about NIL on your website. Joe, can you can you take that one at all? Yes, um, it's a it's a it's a really good question um, from the audience. So. Uh, for those who don't know, uh, name image and likeness, what you hear a lot is called NIL. Um, is a rule that uh, was established recently through a court decisions, a few court decisions, that the NCAA opened up the uh, possibility for student athletes to be empowered, to be compensated for their name, image, and likeness. Um, it is uh, uh, certainly a, a big rule change that has happened, you know, recently. You know, when I was a coach, you felt like if you got bought someone a cheeseburger, you might get arrested. Um, now, now that barrier's gone down. Um, and the way we've viewed it at the team is that there's great opportunities to work directly with student athletes in a way I couldn't have four or five years ago to try to support them, not in a transactional way, um, come to my Ford dealership uh, and take a picture next to a car, but uh, be part of this leadership program for nine months. Um, we, we cover the expenses of the projects that they're doing on their campuses because we didn't want that to be a barrier to executing the project. So as a nonprofit, we're going to do that fundraising to cover that expense so that they can make a positive difference in their community. That's trying to use NIL for good. You know, we, comp we, we, we compensate students for their time and, and some of our programs. We think that's important because they are giving their time and energy. Maybe they won't be able to work another job. They're, they're, they're utilizing their social media platforms for, 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 for supporting um, of the team. Um, you know, that's, I think, a way to try to think through our leadership program and some of our other resources that this is transformational, 
not transactional. And we're trying to work directly with the student athletes in a way that we were not allowed to before NIL. So I think there's a, actually immense opportunity for NIL to be a very positive thing to support just not a student athlete, but support the campus and support the community by empowering student athletes and working directly with them. Yeah, that's great. That's great. Um, another one coming in, um, and Scott, maybe we can start with you. Can you recall a time when you saw the impact of your efforts come to life and inspire others? Yeah, this one's really fitting. Um, so when I've been going to these SAC groups, we went to the Juvenile Justice Center last year, so it was like a test run, see how it'd go, if it would be something that we could continue to do. And after the uh, experience, we met as a group of 40 athletes, the 10 SAC reps from each school, tell us about your experience in the Juvenile Justice Center. Did you have any interactions? Does anyone want to share? And after a couple, uh, a lady from TSU, Penn State University, had spoken about a young a juvenile delinquent female that said, after our conversation, like, I really want to become a athlete at TSU. Like, I would love to come out of this place and strive to be a collegiate athlete. And I've used that story so many times <laughs> over the past five weeks when going to these sacks to get them to understand the influence. And she was talking about how, of a, how much of a profound impact that had on her as an athlete. And she didn't think that this would be the discourse she was having or the impact she was having with these uh, juvenile youths. So that was an immediate uh, impact from going to the Juvenile Justice Centre using that influence and understanding that influence. That's great. Yeah, that's like the epitome of what uh, you're trying to reach right there. And Mia, what about you? So a lot of what I do on campus is, yes, we do inspire people, but it really is to give like information and resources out to people. Um, so one thing that I help with on campus is giving out scholarships to students who are doing internships in public service. And so I think that is something that I can see my the impact of my efforts in that. Um, we do a preliminary uh, information on them. We ask them to fill out a survey and then we do a post survey with them as well. And to see the impact that they had and where their internship was, um, I think that is really like what brings me um, happiness and, to, and what really inspires myself to continue doing this work on my campus. Um, we've had people do insane things. Um, this past summer, we had a um, young student who went to London and worked at the history there. And that is an act of public service. And they were able to find um, World War II memorabilia and return it to those families. Wow. Um, and just to be able to read their story about that was fantastic. We also have stuff that do like um, micro service with like um, homing initiatives, affordable house care, affordable health care, stuff like that. Um, and be able to see the impact they have in these small communities. Um, it's really fantastic. And it really motivates me to continue to push and to fundraise to be able to have this money to um, allow them to do their public service internships. That's fantastic. Um, Joe, as we're reaching the top of the hour, can you leave us on an inspirational, uh, inspirational note and also maybe just a look ahead at what's coming up for the team? I know you, you showed kind of your four main programs for 2024, but what are you looking forward to uh, down the road here? Well, I'll start with this. I, I'd like to just make sure I stress again, I think, you know, hopefully some of the things we're talking about today, when people think about democracy at the local level and their community and how to make a difference, this idea of showing up for each other is really important. Being positive and optimistic, and, and then ultimately thinking about having this common goal, even if we're coming at it from a diverse set of backgrounds. Um, and that's what a team's doing all the time. And that if that transfers into our uh, discourse and into our civics and into our democracy, that's only going to be a positive. We're not going to agree on everything, but if we're coming at it and showing up in a positive way and in an optimistic way and, and having some empathy for people uh, in the conversation, I think that's really important. Um, for the team, I think you see with, with, with Mia and Scotty, they're just amazing uh, leaders right now. Um, and they're going to be impactful leaders the rest of their lives. And so anywhere that we can try to support uh, student athletes across the country to, to continue to grow their confidence and their skills and their experiences to be the leaders of tomorrow, I think that's a great thing for our country, for our communities, and for our democracy, because I know that they can continue to lead in a positive way. Um, the last thing I'll say is I think for folks that are on the call, too, is just thinking about, like, what can you do? Um, I think there's so many ways to, to take that first small step, um, you know, one of just trying to vote and participate in local elections. We always think of big four-year presidential elections, but there's so many opportunities 
to, to participate in democracy at the local level that affects your life more uh, than the presidential. And so I think that's so important, being able to research those things on the ballot. Two is there's always great opportunities to be a poll worker or try to support your local uh, election process, which is great. Um, three is just volunteering for a local nonprofit or a, a local community group is really, really uh, powerful and helpful to help those those folks. And then lastly, I just thought four was if you do have something you're passionate about, um, take that step to go get the ball moving and create something around that. Um, you're, you've got the agency and the power to do that. Uh, and hopefully some of the, the stories of, of what me and Scotty are doing on campus can highlight that, that we all have that power within us to take that first step to really tackle an issue that we're, we're passionate about. Joe, Scott, Mia, thank you so much for spending the hour with us. Thank you for sharing your stories. This has been really informational and um, I hope very practical for the folks um, in the audience. Uh, we appreciate your time. Keep doing what you're doing, inspiring others. And we look forward to uh, hearing more about your stories and, and where you end up um, uh, as, as you go through the rest of your college athlete careers. Um, so thank you again for the time with us. Thank you to everyone in our audience for joining us today. I'm going to close the program today just with a quick preview of a few other programs that we have coming up that you might be interested in. We'd love for you to join us. Um, so a few programs you'll see here on screen. Please join us on April 3rd. We're going to shift gears a little bit. We're going to talk about the 2024 Economic Pulse, Legislative Industry and Business Trends coming up and um, how that can help your business and, and your clients ahead um, for the rest of the year. And then on April 8th, uh, a few of us are heading out to Denver, Colorado to the Lifesavers Conference, one of the largest gathering of roadway safety professionals across the U.S., so we're going to be live streaming a program um, from onsite at the conference called Painting a Clearer Picture, how technology innovations are improving distracted driving data. So we're going to dig into distracted driving, telematics, what some of that data is um, telling us and how it can help us improve roadway safety trends uh, moving forward. So details for all these programs are in the chat. Uh, thank you again to our speakers and to you, our audience, for joining us. I hope you have a great afternoon. Thank you. Mm -hmm.